Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mine Maina. I work with a wonderful organization called Springboard Capital, and I'm in charge of customer experience. I am very passionate about customer experience and bringing change to individuals and organizations based on how I treat them with my, in my interaction with them. And as always, it is our greatest pleasure to welcome you to our monthly BizSmart webinar series. We have had very interesting discussions every month geared to help your customer in running your businesses better and wiser. So our previous topics have been uh, leadership excellence in business, health tips for entrepreneurs, taxation, legal tips for entrepreneurs, and Melton, mental well-being with Niskize. We partnered with Niskize so that uh, if, if you have been very keen on what is going around, there's so much depression and people are very bogged down by the pressures of life. So we hope you have been talking to, to Niskize for just to, to get someone to talk to, to relieve your stress. So at this juncture, I'd like to introduce our speaker for the day. He's called Mr. Godfrey Waiharo, who has had over 14 years of progressive experience in the innovative field. He has served in different countries and capacities in his career and has gained valuable experience and international exposure. In fields, uh, e.g. management, I'll just give you a snippet of his CV, which is very flowery, but we can only mention but a few. So he has experience in management, uh, strategic planning, budgeting, software engineering, ERP implementation, project management, commerce, financial inclusion, mobile technology, data analytics, and dashboards. He also holds a Bachelor of Computing and Information Science degree from the London Metropolitan University. He has attended various conferences in the executive development programs. He is the founder and CEO of Nikosa Africa Limited. He is a father, a farmer, and a media personality. Haribu Godfrey. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mine, for that uh, wonderful and, uh, you know, I, I should say flowering introduction. Uh, thank you so much. So my name is Godfrey and uh, being a lunch hour session, uh, I'm informed then I'm supposed to be serving you um, with hot lunch. So the hot lunch uh, for today is the topic uh, of discussion. So I will be sharing um, a PowerPoint presentation. And so it's not so much about the presentation, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the PowerPoint, it's uh, a discussion, it's a conversation that we are supposed to be having for today. So welcome, and this is your chief chef. Right. Uh, let me share my screen and we get started with this. So the topic for the day, it's about leveraging technology to drive business growth and, um, you know, the digital transformation tips for entrepreneurs. But then when um, I was thinking about the topic, then you think about uh, the millions of entrepreneurs that we have in this country, millions of entrepreneurs, they cut across uh, diverse um, backgrounds or market verticals, um, whether they're in the informal sector, where, whether they're in the formal sector itself. But then it's quite a diverse uh, field uh, that we can look at. And with that, some basic uh, statistics that we're looking at. When I'm thinking about these entrepreneurs, then I'm thinking, all right, these are the, the, the medium, uh, the small and micro entrepreneurs uh, that we have in the country. We have a total of 7.4 uh, million, where then <clears throat> statistics have it that 1.5 million of them, uh, they're licensed, where the rest close to around 6 million, they're not licensed, but all of them, they're in business. And the contribution to our economy and to the GDP cannot be ignored and they're the drivers of actually our economy. So we are talking about the drivers of our economy and therefore the question is how do these drivers of our economy leverage on um, technology to drive 
their business, to drive this economy, to move to the next level. So a bit of definition um, of the term digital transformation. So today we want to demystify technology, this thing about digital transformation, um, get the difference between digital transformation and what uh, people call digitalization. Those are two different things. Because when you think about digitalization, it is actually the implementation of the execution of um, the technology, putting the system, putting the tool, putting the technology into place. However, today we are not talking about digitalization. We are talking about the digital transformation, which is a process. And by definition then, we are looking at digital transformation or DT as a fundamental shift. The underlining of fundamental shift is very deliberate because it is a change in culture, a change in mindset, a change in the processes, okay? That is what we're looking at for, uh, for your organization. Whether as an entrepreneur, you, you, you work alone, it's a sole proprietorship, it's a, an organization, you know, a company. So it's a change of mindset and that is what we want to do today. How do we change our mindset and get ready for the transformation? DT is about the changes in policies. So as we do this, we actually expect that there will be a policy shift. How you've been operating, we need to make changes to uh, how you've been operating. That is the policy shift that we're talking about. So a bit of changes for that policies. Um, the people. Sometimes with DT or the digital transformation, people will feel pushed around uh, a bit. And so we're talking about changes in the people as well. Uh, sometimes you'll be reevaluating the people uh, just to see uh, the skills gap that they have and you, know, you act on it. We're talking about the changes in processes and changes in processes will touch sometimes on the standard operating procedures that you have, that is the SOPs that you have. So that's about changes in processes. The workflows that you have within uh, your business, those will be changing, okay? So it's about breaking those barriers. It's about changing roles. I used to do this. I no longer do it as an employee. So right now I do this. I used to do this as a decision maker, but now that is changing and I do something different. But ultimately the whole goal of, um, you know, the goal, and the ultimate goal of us doing DT and where we want to drive you is to drive productivity and performance, you know, for you to, uh, to, be, able, uh, to be able to remain competitive. So again, it depends on the willingness of the people. That is you as a decision maker, you as a key staff, you as a stakeholder, you as a decision maker. It depends on that willingness to embrace the disruption so we are about to talk about disruption in technology, okay? Now, as we do that, then we need to have an approach. And um, this approach is about the strategy as we get into digital transformation. So what is the approach? What is the strategy that we are adopting as uh, organizations? Number one, we need to think about the goals and not the technology itself. As a business, what do I want to do? What do I want to achieve? Where are the gaps? Okay, how do I create value for my stakeholders? How do I improve on the business outcomes? How do I do that? It doesn't matter where you are along that pyramid, whether at the bottom or at the very top, you know, we are talking about the biggest of corporates, all right? So it doesn't matter where you are. The whole idea is looking and focusing on the goals. And that begs the question, what are your goals as a business? What are your goals, all right? Are your goals, you know, driven towards 
portfolio growth. Is that what we are looking at, the portfolio growth? And in portfolio growth, then we are looking at, you know, the growth in terms of numbers and values. So is that your goal? If the answer is yes, then that informs you what technology you'll be deploying and how you're going to deploy it. Are your goals focused on processes? You know, I want to achieve operational um, efficiency, for example. And where you're talking about efficiency, you're talking about either I'm generating, I'll be generating then, you know, new income, uh, or I'll be looking at cost cutting, right? So as an organization, then I've been doing things this particular way, but then now as I, embark on this particular change on digital transformation, then I want to focus on processes. Is the goal, for example, uh, geared towards capacity? You know, uh, how you attract, uh, how you develop, how you retain uh, quality uh, staff, motivated staff within your, within your ranks. Is your goal towards corporate image? We are talking about branding that Moving forward, um, I want to embrace uh, DT, uh, digital transformation. And my goal in this case will be to, to enhance on my corporate image and you know, very strong branding. When you talk about branding, then you start thinking of what technologies will I deploy for me to achieve that particular goal. So the other thing that we'll be looking at is item number two, you need to take risks, okay? As an organization, as a business, you need to be able to take risks. So make a decision, a very deliberate decision to go to these uncharted territories. You need to be proactive. You, you, you don't need to play catch up with the rest of uh, the players in your sector, in that market vertical that you're serving in. So there are very many opportunities that you may miss. Um, and you're missing these opportunities because um, you didn't take the risk. So take the risk, jump into the water, all right? Part of taking the risk uh, will involve also issues to do with budgetary uh, or budgeting and um, appropriation. So you need to be able to allocate sufficient funds, and we'll be talking about these later, you need to be able to allocate sufficient funds, you know, that can be able to defend disruption. And disruption is actually what Mina talked about in the introduction, and we'll be talking about this disruption. So do I have sufficient funds or budget that will defend my organization or my business when it comes to that disruption? Because it is the new normal. We are looking at the new norm. We'll be looking at onboarding stakeholders. And in the process of onboarding stakeholders, what you want to do and what you need to do is to bring everyone onto um, you know, your let them join. Okay. This is a journey of transformation that you are undertaking. So the IT team, um, project experts, whether you're talking about your finance, your supply chain uh, team, anyone uh, in, your, in your team that you feel they are subject experts or key stakeholders, bring them on board because you need them on this particular journey. The other thing you need to do is to convert them into your biggest funds in this particular, convert them into your fiercest, you know, advocates of the out of otherwise you'll be walking this journey alone okay get feedback from the stakeholders they'll keep giving you feedback the last item moving forward let us make data driven decisions because the path you're about to walk and the path that we are all working on is paved with data it's not it's not tarmacked the business path and that path to growth is paved with data. So let's make data driven decisions as we move forward. Now, 
for us to be able to achieve these as SMEs, um, you know, uh, businesses, including the corporates. But then now uh, talking about the entrepreneurs, for us to be able to achieve these, then we look at cloud solutions. And that would be my advice. We can engage on this conversation even on and on. You know, um, it's quite a lengthy but very exciting conversation. So the conversation here is how then do the entrepreneurs uh, get on board onto the cloud debate, the cloud infrastructure, the cloud uh, solutions. These cloud solutions, we are calling them SaaS and um, the IAAS. Uh, SaaS here standing for software as a service and infrastructure as a service. So we have reasons, or I have reasons why then we'll be talking about entrepreneurs embracing SaaS and infrastructure as a service. Some of the reasons, and this is very, very smart um, in terms of uh, the reasons. And we are looking at the issue of your CAPEX versus your OPEX. Uh, to elaborate, your capital expenditure versus your operational expenditure. That is what we are looking at. And therefore the question is, as a business, would I invest, should I invest heavily in software and in hardware, that is infrastructure, whereas I can actually, you know, go to the cloud uh, options, you know, subscribe for these software, subscribe for the infrastructure, pay as I go, and then I spread my cost. And that is what we are calling the OPEX, the operational expenditure. I spread my cost. So these are costs that I can incur, you know, weekly, I can incur monthly, I can incur quarterly or annual, but then I don't have to pay for it upfront. That is item number one. And that is what you as a business person or as, a, as an entrepreneur, then you need to think about CAPEX versus your OPEX. Can I use the money that I've used for capital expenditure? Can I use it then to invest much more in my business? Is it the supplies that I need? Is it the raw materials that I need? Is it, you know, I'm into agribusiness? Can I buy inputs using the same funds? Moving forward, it is about maintenance. As a business, it is your business to focus on what is core to your organization and not then to start engaging in maintenance. You know, I, I, I need to maintain uh, this particular so solution or software. I need to maintain uh, these servers. It is about maintenance. So you need to concentrate on what is core to you. The other thing is the cloud solutions that you'll be looking at are cross-platform in terms of the devices. I can use them anywhere without location barrier can use them on my mobile device, on my tablets, on my, you know, on my laptop. It doesn't matter. So that is why you need that kind of mobility and cross-platform uh, functionality. And then there is the staff productivity and efficiency. Yes, you need them to work from anywhere, anytime to give you value. Now, having talked about these very nice things that you need to do as a business, then we come now to the new normal. The new normal is that we are living in the COVID era. That was from the introduction that we were told by Mina. We are living in the COVID era. And from the screen, what you're seeing over there, at the middle, things are very thick, very hot. This is COVID. Okay, and we are looking actually at a global humanitarian crisis whose impact is both immediate and far felt, you know. So what then we need to do is to think of how do we deal with the current crisis or the current situation that you're faced with. The circle that uh, you're seeing there on the presentation, we're talking about respond, recover, and thrive. So how do we use technology to respond, recover, and thrive as a business? Now, 
The issue of responding, we are talking about how then you're able to face the crisis and manage you know, continuity. Uh, it will be very wrong and you'll get nightmares if you shut your business and close your doors because we were not able then to respond. How do we face this crisis and manage the continuity? The recover is about what we are able to learn from this whole uh, crisis. You know, it is about recover, it's about learning, it is about growth. Can we learn and grow? And then we are talking about thrive. Thrive is the exciting part, which is now the takeoff. And we are taking off to this new normal. Things are not the same anymore. It's a new normal. A new normal that we are talking about travel restrictions. You know, we, we, we are learning new terms, you know, uh, that travel restrictions or curfew, there is lockdown. All these are very new to us, but then this is the new normal. Looking at a very, very disrupted economic landscape. So how then do we survive as businesses and use technology? In every crisis, there is that silver lining, okay? And so the crisis is what you're looking at on that screen, the previous screen, you know? Every crisis, there is an opportunity. Every downside, there is an upside. And so the upside of COVID-19 is that actually it has accelerated digital transformation. So DT, is a beneficiary of this crisis. And it presents to us several opportunities. What I've been able to do is to list for you around eight opportunities that we'll look at. These opportunities will cut across different um, areas, different markets, different sectors. We may not be able to cover every sector that is represented in this uh, webinar. But then some of the questions then will be answered, some of them online and some of them offline. But then what are the opportunities in the health sector? In the health sector and how we can deploy then technology or leverage on technology is think about e-health, okay? To most, most people, e-health is a new term, it's a new technology, you know, it's a new vocabulary. But then it has been a long, uh, you know, it, it's been with us for quite, you know, a long time. But then we are appreciating it now. When we talk about e-health, we think of us people, citizens, realizing the importance of our own health. And that is why e-health is coming into play. Think about what you've been seeing in the media every other day about mental health you know, driven by stress, depression, all that, mental health. So the question here is, what tools can you deploy to deal with the crisis of mental health? There's so much that we can do. We have online platforms that we can work with. We have a very good penetration of mobile phones, in this case, smart phones that we need to use. If you are in playing in the sector that is the medical field, if you're in that field, whether you're a doctor, you're a nurse, whoever you are, you're a medic, then can we start then coming up with um, platforms that we can consume as, a, uh, as citizens that address the issue of mental health? What we are seeing in the news is very disturbing and we need to put a stop to this. Okay. We learned about contact tracing and we've seen solutions around contact tracing. So you are in IT, what are you doing about contact tracing? You're in the medical field, what are you doing about it? We've seen solutions around dial a doctor, dial you know, a pharmacy so that medicine is uh, you know, delivered to you. We've seen all that. We've seen um, you know, solutions around the medical supply chain. And the medical supply chain, it's about us being able then to monitor uh, the demand and the supply of, you know, um, you know, ventilators. We are talking about ventilators. We are talking about um, oxygen, 
um, because every other day you go online, uh, people are actually going through so much that up to now, we do not know the capacity that we have around Nairobi in terms of oxygen and the supply. Up to now, if you have a patient and you need to rush them and they need to be put on oxygen, then you'll have to do guesswork. And the guesswork that you are doing, every minute, every second counts to that patient and you may lose them. What if then someone in this forum decides you know, to leverage on technology and create a platform that will be able to monitor what oxygen uh, you know, can, can we get in this hospital, that hospital, can we get here before you start moving around in, in, in an ambulance? Talking about the PPEs, okay? Talking about medicine, all that. So those are opportunities that we have in the medical field. You play in that sector, please jump onto that opportunity and leverage on technology, okay? We can elaborate further uh, on each and every of those aspects. We are talking about also remote personal care, still in healthcare, remote personal care. That is part of it. We are talking about how do we do referrals of patients from here to that hospital and all that, you know, online diagnosis. We are talking about fitness. You've seen quite a number of um, people coming up with solutions around fitness and wellness. So let's do it. Let's use the technology that we have. Let's use mobile technology. Uh, we have web portals that are there. So let's use that. We have social media as well. Now, in education, we got shocked, actually, that, I don't know, since independence, you know, since you were born, I was born, we've never experienced closure of schools. But then there is massive closure of schools that happen. So what came from that is you are able to create content that can be used for online classes. You are here as an entrepreneur, you're into publishing. So what can you do? Create the content that we can consume on online classes because um, you know, that is the new norm. What gadgets and tools are we using for collaboration? So everybody right now is talking about Zoom, you know, Teams, uh, Skype and all that. Those are terms we never used to hear even in the education sector, Zoom, Teams, all that. So that is the new normal, again. So use that technology, create the content, upload that content, let us consume it. In e-commerce, there is so much that we can do. Um, every day when you go to social media platforms, whether you're talking about Facebook, you know, you're talking about TikTok, you're talking about Instagram, um, Twitter, we are seeing a lot of this, especially around um, you know, Instagram that entrepreneurs have taken up social media. So social media is no longer um, used, we're no longer using it just for you know, social interaction, we're using it for business. So as an entrepreneur, yes, you're not doing well. Yes, the physical or the brick and mortar presence or location is no longer tenable. You're not, no longer able to pay you know, or to sustain that brick and mortar location, however, can you have and operate an online shop? Yes, you can. We are seeing a lot of homemade products coming up because people lost you know, jobs. They're creating homemade products. You as an entrepreneur, you are in a position actually to take these same homemade products, aggregate them, you know, and you have an online shop. So that is what you're talking about. There is a lot of talk that is gaining traction about local products, consume you know, local products made in Kenya. You know, there is yet another um, narrative that Africa produces what they do not consume and consume what they do not produce. So this is the time to change this narrative using technology. Let's create e-commerce on social media. Let's create e-commerce on web you know, solutions. And we have mobile phones. So that is what we can do uh, in terms of e-commerce. So there are so many players in that area. Um, some of them who are represented in this particular forum. We have people um, you know, or players in freight, warehousing, insurance, uh, brokers. 
we are looking at clearing agents, delivery agents, financial institutions, whether they are insurance or you know, banks, they are SACOs, MFIs, all of them. So we are called upon then to do all these aggregation towards e-commerce. Financial inclusion, there is so much that we can talk about in terms of you know, the velocity of money, okay? And the services that we need to deliver, the speed of delivery. We're being told, yes, um, uh, less interaction with um, hard cash, that is fine. So what we do, we adopt um, the, 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 we adopt virtual wallets, we adopt mobile money, we adopt agency models. Uh, we think about KYC because you're in the financial uh, sector, but then your KYC, that is knowing your customer is wanting. So how do we ensure then that we do KYC using technology? We have biometrics. Uh, that we can use for, for, for KYC, biometrics are there. So can we do proper biometrics or KYC so that then we reduce on the risk uh, that, 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 that we are facing? Uh, we are looking at integration as well. Integration is a very broad area. You are looking at integration to payment platforms, to banks, to CRBs, to IPRS for registration of persons. So, so much technology that we can use to grow our business and move it to the next level. Now, moving now from that to social events, um, corporate events, uh, if, you, if you like, we, we experienced cancellation of major events and uh, events organizers, they went through a lot of pain. But then at some point they realized that this is the new normal and we are here with COVID. And so what do we do? We need to start embracing the digital content streaming. And that is happening and has started happening, you know, digital content streaming. How can we do virtual reality? You're in this forum and what you do, you are into real estate. Am I able to actually make sales, meet customers without meeting them physically? Am I able to make sales without my customers going to see or view? my housing units or even the land that I'm selling? Am I able to do virtual reality or virtual tours? Because I can do a complete virtual tour of the housing units that I have and a customer makes a decision and actually takes up without me taking them physically to where the houses are, okay? You can start that engagement. I'm able actually to sell land Okay, I have a hundred acres of land, you know, somewhere subdivided this land, but then how do I reach out now to these buyers who are here, some in the diaspora? So all I need to do is create virtual tours and this is technology. The remote working, um, yes, we're doing remote working. The physical space is no longer, uh, you know, most businesses are not able then to handle um, the cost that comes with it and the overheads. So we are looking at saving costs. So look at it from the brighter side, saving costs. You have employees that work for you. You adopt the BYOD, that is bring your own device. And bring your own device means then that that laptop, that mobile phone, that tablet that your employee has in their own house, they're able actually to work and synchronize with your devices or your servers. So that is a cost saving that you're looking at that you don't have to invest in, in all these infrastructure and they are very available. So gone are the times then that someone tells you, no, 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 I'm not in the office. No, 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 they are available and they're able to work for you. So look at an opportunity where we need to set up command centers. These command centers, it's what you call CRM, the customer relation management uh, platforms that integrate to ERP, integrate to analytics, then that you're able to uh, set up the customer care. The customer care that we are looking at, we, we, we are looking at order fulfillment, you know, uh, product availability. They are giving you that information, giving information on delivery timelines, inventory levels and logistics. So that's another opportunity. So you are here as an entrepreneur, embrace that technology, the CRM, the ERPs, the analytics and let's set up uh, command centers that will be able to serve our business and beyond. We're looking at delivery services. 
So we are all familiar with quite, you know, uh, household names are, are around this time uh, when it comes to delivery. Uh, I don't want to mention them, uh, otherwise you'll say I'm marketing some of them. But then, yes, we are very familiar with uh, those delivery services. Is it possible that you create your own courier service or delivery service? Okay. As an entrepreneur, how do you use technology to serve, you know, um, your neighbors, deliver uh, uh, groceries, you know, essential things like medicine? How do you do that? So that is what we challenge you as entrepreneurs to, to do, okay? And by the way, when I was talking about item number five, about the virtual events, I want you even to think about very basics like social events, weddings and burial, you know, funeral services. Funeral services, we are told, yes, a limit of X number of people, but then are we able to follow the same funeral service online? Yes, we are, and that is happening. So as an entrepreneur, why don't you jump onto this? Okay, it looks like small, but it makes a very big difference. You know, corporate events like, you know, product launches, um, they're happening online, virtual. So let's embrace this, okay? So how do we achieve this? We achieve these through integrated tools and there are quite a number of tools then that um, you can look at. Uh, you don't have to work with all these tools and you know uh, these, these these are choice at some point yeah you need advice on what you need to go for um, etc but number one we are looking at payments anything that you do as an entrepreneur what matters is what gets into your pocket or the bank so how do you integrate payments whether they are mobile payments or bank okay so how do we do the integration of these payments? So let's have this conversation. Number two, if you're thinking about proper, know your customer, KYC or onboarding of your customers and you're thinking about adoption of biometrics, then there you are. How do they integrate as well? You're thinking about agency model because it's becoming very difficult in the current era for us to be able to do brick and mortar expansion. Can we do agency expansion, okay? Can we do data collection? And data collection in this case, we are talking about that ERP, that cloud um, solution that we have. So all that, that is the data collection. And lastly, we talk about the analytics and the dashboarding. How can I analyze this data as an entrepreneur in my own small way? Avail it on my mobile phone, avail it on a dashboard on my laptop, okay? So that's about the analytics. And with that, as we wind up, so that we open this for Q&A, there is a question, you know, we are saying it is time for us to reinvent ourselves, to enhance and support our lives. But most importantly, sustain and grow our businesses in the new normal. Are you ready? Good. Now, I know I have a limitation of time. And so, Mini, I take this back to you for Q and A's before we wind up. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Godfrey, for that powerful and insightful presentation. I can see one question from um, FB. Uh, it says the pace and scale of digital acceleration makes it difficult for some companies to close the gap on rivals. How does one close the gap? How does one try and catch up? All right. Thank you for that question. Now, about closing the gap, uh, part of the slide, we were talking about taking the risk and we shouldn't play catch up. So if you allow, I'll, I'll just go back to it very fast. Uh, there we are. Yeah, item number two there, taking the risk. So we need to go into that uncharted territory. When an opportunity presents itself, we need to jump onto that opportunity. Else, once the train has left the station, you'll be playing catch up, okay? We always say opportunities are like rivers and you don't touch the same water twice. So opportunity comes, 
let's jump onto it. So it's about being proactive, okay? Catch up, yes, you can catch up, but then just like in the races, you know, and you know, you, we are on the pitch, you know, on the track and we are running, catch up can, can be very expensive, but yes, you can still catch up. Thank you. Any other question? All right. Um, Tintin asks, is automation part of digital transformation? All right, yes, it is. And still to the previous question, I think um, being, being scalable or getting scalable um, platforms then will help you to catch up with the competition uh, okay. that is ahead. Yes, to that second question, in the introduction, we talked about DT, the digital transformation. Digitalization or that automation is part of the DT because we say DT is a process. Okay, it's not an event, it's a process. So yes, it is part of it. Okay. And Caroline asks, how costly is digital transformation and will businesses manage during this COVID times? Okay. Uh, it depends on what your goals are because at some point we talked about us being able to focus on our goals. And we talked about whether the goals were around portfolio growth, you know, processes, capacity of corporate image. And that goal then informs the technology that you need to adopt. Some of this technology is so affordable because I only need to create an account and get onto social media. And it moves me to the next level. If I was thinking about corporate image, if I was thinking about, you know, uh, growth portfolio in terms of numbers, because we normally say when it comes to social media, your following is your foundation. That following that you have on um, social media is actually your foundation. So it can be as affordable as that or as expensive as we may look at um, ERP solutions. But yes, it's affordable in this era. And again, remember we talked about us being able to go to cloud okay, and spread the cost operation expenditure, yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Paul Otieno asks, do you have an example matrix of digitization by industry and what are the basics in terms of application platforms and the related costs? All right, uh, we can, yes, that can be provided and we can take that uh, offline. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I can get his contacts, I will happily uh, share this with him, uh, the matrix and the cost implications that you may be looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Uh, digital transformation sounds very complex. Will hustlers manage these things? We are a hustler nation and you know that. So how will we manage that? <laughs> All right. Uh, that is similar to a question that was asked previously about the cost of uh, DT uh, and the automation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it is affordable and we said it can be as affordable or as cheap as uh, it can be or as expensive. If you think about an entrepreneur who is doing homemade products, I'm making my uh, mats, I'm making uh, Kyondo, I'm making whatever I'm making. Um, Am I able then to get onto these social media platforms and be able to market? Yes, you're able uh, to do that with you know, the list of costs, okay? If we are looking at uh, bigger uh, entrepreneurs with bigger businesses, am I able then to get um, a solution that I'm able to spread the cost and pay on a monthly basis instead of me incurring all these millions at a time like now? Yes, you can do that and the solutions are there. And some of these conversations, we can actually uh, have them one-on-one -on -one or offline with uh, okay. participants, yeah. So would you be willing to share your presentation with our, our, our customers? Yes, um, we'll, share, we'll share this, we'll do a PDF of the same uh, okay. and actually add more notes because you realize the presentation was not very wordy. So we can add yes. a few more notes and then we share with you. Mr. Godfrey, maybe you can share your contacts and social media handles so that people can be able to reach you later. 
and ask all these big names that they're asking yeah. now. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, in the then Mina talked about uh, who Godfrey is, um, the CEO and the founder of Nikos Africa. So uh, there we are. So Nikos Africa, these are names that we coined from four uh, different rivers, that is Nijai, Nile, Congo, and Zambezi. Um, so those are names of rivers. And that's how it came up with Nikos Africa. So yes, um, you, can, you can reach us, uh, that is Nikos Africa. You can check us on online on the website. Um, so, ke, uh, there is nikosa.com, but then um, most of the solutions that is just for uh, and our solutions are on nikosa.co.ke. That is where you find us. Our contacts are there. We have found at the Wilson, uh, that is the Wilson Airport, the Wilson Business Park. That is where we are found. All right, but then as a as a person, uh, when I'm not doing um, uh, what I do for Nicosa, then you can still find me on social media at Monte Kajama on all the social media platforms. M O N T E K A J A M W -A, A Monte Kajama. So you can find me on social media on those handles. Thank you so much. Thank you to Godfrey. It was a very insightful talk and our lunch was five calls. So that one we have shibad kweli kweli. I believe everyone has come out of here with a new thing. And I like the way you have coined your name from the four rivers. I would not even have guessed that one. So thank you very much for serving us good lunch. And I hope our customers are well informed now. Um, we would also like to remind you that as Springboard, we pride ourselves in being the springs that propel you to greater and better heights in life by lending you money at very affordable rates. Our slogan is we are the lending hand. So anytime you have a financial need or a financial boost that you may want, please come to us and we will be able to assist you. We also pride ourselves in the professionalism and customer experience that is very unmatched in the industry. So you can find us in our three branches. Uh, we have one at Town House, I mean in town, at Rehani House on seventh floor, Thika at Sawa House, and our head office is at CPA Center on Thika Road, opposite uh, Survey. We are also on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as Springboard Capital. And our website is www.springboardcapital.com .co.ke. So you can find us anywhere. We welcome you and let us do business together. Let us transform each other's lives. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we hope to see you next month during our lunch break, which is our webinar series. Thank you very much for tuning in.